Hey guys, welcome back to Beach and Fishing. Paul here with you again today. And today we're going to look at my three best rod, surf fishing rod and reel combos. Beach and Fishing is my site aimed at fishing. Talking about fishing, seeing what we can find, seeing what is good to purchase for beginners, experts, um, opinions, my recommendations, anyone who has different opinions, which is the thing I like, love about fishing. Everyone has a different opinion. So right from the start, if you have a different opinion, please comment below. I'd love to hear um, what different people are doing with fishing. But as I mentioned, today we're going to talk about three surf fishing rod and reel combos that I have to look at. Uh, when we talk about surf fishing, obviously a big rod, a, traditionally a bigger rod and a bigger um, reel although not necessarily these days. I mean, I've got friends who fish with the little seven foot models with little reels and they do just as well as everything else. This one here is quite a stiff one. It's actually a three teeth. So I've got the other pieces here. Um, this one's a really heavy rod too. It's a heavy power, heavy action, uh, very stiff. And I use this when we're chasing the big fish in the current, Hendy, hence the reel is also big. It's actually more of a boat reel. It's got the bait runner option on the back, which I like if I've got the rod sitting in the water. This is what I use for chasing the big fish. Can't bring the smaller ones in here, even, although I have got a smaller reel, which we'll talk about in a second, um, because they're all one piece and they won't fit in the room that I'm in at the moment, which is why I'm showing you this one here. This one's a 13 foot model. As I say, it's for the use. We'll talk about location use for rods in a second for the surf. Uh, some of my others are 10 foot, I've got a nine foot. And as I mentioned, they're one piece and I use them because I because of what we're, we're looking at. So for those of you looking to uh, get yourself set up with a surf fishing rod and reel combo, first, the main thing to think of before you get the rod and reel is effectively where you'll be using it. Now, beaches have different compositions. Uh, they have different ways. Just let me check the, um, I haven't got it in this one, but I should have got a picture for you. Um, the beaches have different setups. Some have gutters. Now what a gutter is, is you'll have the shore, then you'll have a deep trench and then a sand bank behind it. That deep trench is where you want to fish in. Quite often where the beach that I fish at quite regularly, which is our local beach, there's a gutter right on the, or what we call on the doorstep. So it's right on the beach, meaning that quite often, even my, uh, if I see that, I'll take, I sometimes even take my estuary rod, my seven or eight foot rod, because the fish I'm getting are right there. I don't have to cast a long way, especially if it's not a a big current. This one here, we use, on a, oh, just dropped everything, we use on a different beach. It um, has quite strong current and the gutter is a bit further out and we're chasing a bigger type of fish there. And I mean, you only catch one, maybe two, if you're lucky, I haven't caught one in ages, but you know, and it's a big line, big sink, a big bait. It just sits there while we mess around with the little rods with lures and stuff like that. So again, different rods for different things. If you're looking for somewhere where, you, if you're fishing somewhere where you need to cast a bit further, you'll want a longer rod because they have better cast action. Uh, medium to light power and action because they're a bit whippier and they'll cast a bit further. As I use with mine, if I'm on a stronger current, I use a heavier log rod. Um, heavy power because I'm I have a strong current if there's rocks or logs or coral you might want something a little bit whippier because and with a um, even a bit smaller because you might need more accuracy in where you're casting this thing here people who can be who can cast accurately with heavy power rods are my heroes because I'm lucky to get this within the same postcode half the time but with a smaller whippier ones you can be quite accurate in where, in where you get them so <clears throat> think about the environment you need, mainly about how far you need to cast it, what the currents are like, and whether you need total accuracy or whatever and what you're looking for. From there, then we can start looking at our rods and, and reels. So let's start with the rods. So when it comes to a good surf rod, um, I already mentioned length. As I say, this one is a 30. I'm going to take the reel off this one because it's quite, it's a really heavy reel. Um, so I'm going to take it off so I, I can hold it a bit better and look at it a bit better. I just want to show you the combo, which is why that's on. But um, this one here is, as I say, it's a 13 foot. It is a heavy action and it's actually three pieces. I got it for three pieces purely for the fact that the it can go in the back of the tray of, the, of my truck or into a friend's mine SUV that's got a canopy on the back. We can fit in there without having to worry about trying to put it on top. I've got racks on top that I put the, the one piece on, but I got this as a three piece for that reason. As I say, I wanted a heavy rod. This came with a combo. The real um, 
didn't last very long, I will admit, but the um, the rod came with a combo. It was a, it was a good rod, but not the best reel, which is something to look at, and we'll talk about that in a second. But um, 13 foot, because of what I use it for, anywhere between 10 and 13 foot for longer casting. If you're on a and in the lots of gutters or accuracy, I mean, you can get away with seven or eight foot rods. Eight foot rods quite long. I would recommend if you're going across the board, across a lot of along areas. I only had one surf rod for years and years and years and all manner of way, shapes and uses. It was a medium, it was a 10 foot medium action rod and it, I still use it today. It, it's light, so it bends at the top. Um, medium, light power, medium action, so it bends at the top, quite whippy, very good for casting, used a lot. So think about your length in terms of what you want to use it for. This one is a fiberglass rod. So it's, I mean, it's quite light. It's, it's the other parts are quite light. When it comes to rods and combos, you'll get fiberglass, graphite, carbon is is the new, carbon is a new black, I suppose you could say. It's um, very light, very strong. Look for things with your rods. So see, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but in the center here, it's got ceramic in the, in the eyelet. Some of them only have metal eyelets and they tend to get a bit if they, if they corrode even a little bit, they can catch your line. So try and get one with a ceramic or some come with like an aluminium oxide. If you can see, if you can see an internal layer on there, whether it's aluminium oxide or even stainless steel, as long as it's nice and smooth and is inside the actual eyelet holder, then you're gonna be okay. Make sure they're on nice and strong. Some of the older ones were tied on, had string with fiberglass over and they look pretty cool. Uh, anything that you think strong there. Carbon fiber is nice and light, a little bit more expensive. Graphite, I mean, they, it used to be that fiberglass needed a lot more maintenance than graphite, but these days just make sure you rinse them down when you're finished. This one's a couple of years old. I rinse it every time I use it. There's no rust on it. Um, no rust, well, the seating's all plastic and, and that anyway, hard plastic on the seating, but that's metal. Um, that's plastic, that's a, a plastic there as well. So, I mean, it's not going to to rust obviously, but just be careful. Some of them are stainless steel in there and just keep them clean. Take the reel off every now and then just to clean that out. Um, handle and grip, this one's a, an EBA, which means it's nice and soft. Sorry for the edit there, I just sneeze. This one's nice and soft um, and durable. Some of them cork, if they're cork, they're quite light. If they're cork, just make sure they've got a, a coating over them because if it's just cork, they tend to chip. Some of them are rubber. They're all pretty good these days, just make sure. The rubber ones tend to be a bit softer. So again, just make sure that you've um, got one that's comfortable. This one's three piece. Again, different opinions here. I have never found any difference in experience with one, two or three piece rods in terms of catching fish. Um, maybe I'm not experienced enough, but I've never really noticed it within feel, within sensitivity. To me, I mean, this one here is as heavy. If, if I had that licking around for small fish, I'd be lucky if I felt it anyway, because of the way the rod's built. Lighter ones, you feel it all. Got two piece, three piece, one piece. Comes down, my opinion, again, comment below, but my opinion, it comes down to the, the storage capabilities and the transport capabilities. If you haven't got a rack on top of your car, or you've got a small car, then you need two or three piece to fit it in the car, basically. And that's what you're looking for. So that's your rod. Length depends on casting where you're going. Most of them made of, they're all made of fiberglass, graphite or carbon. Carbon's lighter and stronger, it tends to be, last a bit longer. The other two are quite good, just maintain them. If you're gonna be holding for a long period of time, the lighter the better. Handles, check for comfort and just check the eyelets, make sure they've got an insert there and your rod will be fine. Okay, then it comes to reels. Now my experience with rod and reel combos, I've got about four or five fishing rods out there that came in rods and reel combos and the reels died and the rods are still going nice and strong. I suppose that makes some sense because the reels are in a component. This reel here, it's not a surf reel, but it's smaller and easier for me to handle than the big one I've got here. It is a, um, it came as a combo. Now it's lasted me four years. It is a strong, it's a plastic and aluminium build. It's nice and light. It's got stainless steel in the bale. It's got a um, drag on the front. It's got a, a um, line hold here. The only thing this one hasn't got is an anti-reverse switch. Anti-reverse switches are at the bottom here. This one has one, you can see this clips there. So if I've got that there, 
I can't turn it back. I can't unleash this thing. If I do that, I can turn it back and forth. So the anti-reverse lets you move the rod, the wire and the reel, another one here, smaller one, so you can see that there, see that little switch there. So that way it goes back and forth, fix back that way, it won't go back. So, I mean, if, you're, if you've got your rod in a holder, you're not gonna want it going backwards. If you've got it in your hand, some people like to wind it back because especially if the tide's going out, they can take it out with the tide. So I suppose it's up to you. Most of them come with them. This one's five plus one ball bearings. Ball bearings go in, in the rail here and in the handle. The more ball bearings you have, the smoother this, their by design supposed to be, um, unless you get sand and stuff in them, so always rinse them out. These, this one's five and one, as I say, you can see that spinning on its own, it's quite smooth. The more the better. Um, but when it comes to a reel on a combo, just check that it's not made of cheap plastic, because that's the ones that tend to fall apart. This one is quite strong, as I say, aluminium and stainless steel. Have a look at the component there. Even if you have to in a shop, unscrew it, take it off and make sure it's all in one piece. If you can see springs that can come loose and stuff, that's where your problem's gonna be because the all-in-one pieces are easy to maintain. You can take it off, you can rinse it all out. If I unscrew that front um, drag turner, if I drew it all the way up, this just pops off and I can rinse out in underneath there. As I say, I've had this one for about four years. I rinse it after every use and there's no rust on it, still nice and smooth. It has been dropped in the sand. I use it on a kayak sometimes, and if you fish on a kayak, you will invariably drop your reel in the water. While you're holding the rod, the reel will go in the water. You, I avoid it, but it happens. Just rinse it out when you're finished very, very well. Sometimes take that off, rinse that out inside, and it works fine. So as I've said, the reel is something that you will be looking for. That they're, they're what fall apart in combos more than anything else. Just make sure it's good quality when you look at the rod and reel combo. If the rod's really good and the reel's not so good, maybe buy the rod and get yourself a separate reel. Um, for a fishing rod, a uh, reel for surf fishing, this one you can see there's 3,000. And I think uh, the camera hasn't zoomed in on that very well because of the light behind. You can see that's 3,000, just giving you a blurry real there. Um, for the surf, I would probably recommend anything from four to six. Just gives you the capacity to have a bigger line because in the surf, the chances are that something big can come along. We catch a lot of, we don't keep them, but we catch a lot of stingrays and shovel nose sharks and stuff where we are. Something like this, it'll just snap the line. So you're always rebaiting, at least with the, the big ones. This one here is a 6.5 6 or 6,500, which means it can take anywhere up to about six to eight pound line. Um, I think this is a 10 or 15 pound braid, um, maybe a bit big for it. This one here's a 3,000, I've got a 4,000, a four pound braid on that one. So this one can handle a lot bigger stuff than the other one can. Meaning that if bigger fish come along, it's easier for me to catch with that than this one. Um, that said, this one's about 15 years old, this, this reel. And a friend of mine bought, this is a Shimano 65B bait runner, 6500. A friend of mine bought exactly the same reel recently. It's about half the size. So again, they're coming down in, like everything else in this world, they're coming down in size, but they're, and his is half the weight of mine. This one's quite heavy. Um, I can't use this in a kayak, it's too heavy. I don't like to use this um, surf fishing if I'm holding it, it's too heavy. It's not bad in a boat because the boat, I just you can just rest the reel on the side there. But that's it. So for a reel, make sure it's good quality. Four to six, four, 40 to 60 or 4,000, 6,000 in size. Handles are plastic or some come with big handles. Plastic um, or well-made aluminium, stainless steel. There is other types of reels you can get. Base caster reels, I haven't written about them yet, but I'm about to, so keep an eye out for that. We have LV Surf reels in Australia here too, which I, yes, here it is. They're the other reels that we get. I haven't seen them much in overseas sites, but in Australia, it's an Australian brand, Alby. These are the old school. So it sits on a reel like that. You flick it open, it casts like that, flick it back. Ratio is one to one. It's, they have a little drag on the front there, although this one's drag died years ago, because this one's about 20 years old. Um, but you can see it's degraded on the handles there a bit, but these are a, a good little, I love these, but um, 
on the real rod and reel combos that you buy these days, you're rarely going to get an Alba reel. So about two or three hundred dollars each, as they are good reels. Though. So we're talking about spinner reels for the combos, bait casts for the ones that spin upside down. You, we can have like that. Some of my friends have them if they want to cast a really long way. They reckon that the bait casters will go further than the spinner reels. Um, I haven't tried that myself, but I'm not going to argue the point with them because I've seen them cast and they cast further than I can and caught more fish like than I did at, on those times. So hard to argue. But anyway, with the rod and reel combos, we're going with the, the spinner reel. Okay, let's look at the three I've come up with then to help you out. So the first one we've got here is the Cast King Centron spinning reel fishing rod combo. Um, six to eight foot in length. Try and get the 7.6 or 8 foot for the surf, so it's a lighter one. Medium to heavy, but it's fast action. Two-piece graphite and EVA handle. 5,000 size reel, 9 plus 1, 4.5 to 1 uh, ratio. That's something I mentioned before. I didn't mention before. 4.5 to 1 means every time you turn it, the handle once, it brings a, it spins the reel 4.5 times, meaning you're going to bring it a bit, bit faster. Aluminium build, front of spill drag, any reverse switch, line holder, and interchangeable winder, which means they go left or right handed. Uh, lightweight graphite, stainless steel guide with O-rings, so it's got the rings inside the guides I've mentioned. Contour handles and fighting butt means you can rest it against you. Um, probably the only concern I have with this one is the medium heavy power, but it's fast action. And I think with the way the build, and based on the reviews that I've read for this one, the fast action will, will mean that the, the medium to heavy build makes it capable of using quite a few different areas and it's a bit shorter as well which will help with helps negate that too so this one's a good one for the price um, as i say we'd like to send a lighter power rating but the reel is really good with this one and as i keep mentioning that's something that you need to worry about if you're looking at rod and reel combos so yeah so that's my first one click here if you want to see more information about that second one is a quantum pt reliance spinning reel and two-piece fishing rod combo so this one splits down eight to 10 foot, again, medium to heavy, but again, fast action. Uh, two piece fiberglass graphite, the eight and one, the eight foot's medium and a 10 foot goes up to heavy. They all seem to, a lot of them seem to do that with the online ones, but anyway, uh, fiberglass graphite, nice and light. 3,000, 5.1, 5.6 to one, aluminium, 40 pound drag, uh, heavy duty guides, stainless steel cushion heel. So that's what I was talking about. Before with the real seat, it's stainless steel. Just make sure that's um, it's there. Watertight seal and reel and salt guard protection. Now this one's similar to what I purchased. The only problem I have with this one is maybe the reel's a little bit small, but with the build of it, the forty pound drag um, and a watertight seal, it would work very well. And I think it, it based on what I've seen with that, it would handle a slightly bigger line if you wanted to put that on. Uh, good durable rod and reel. It will work in most beach conditions. The rod actually has some issues with it in the reviews of it snapping for a couple of people. So just be aware of that and how you use it. But that's only a couple of reviews out of the um, 13. So there was a two in there that said the rod wasn't great, but the reel here is really good. So keep an eye on that one too. Okay, pen battle three. Pen, the rod that I just showed you, my big one is a pen. Um, in a couple of the, the fishing Facebook groups and stuff that I look around in, everyone, hi, anyone, anytime someone says, I oh, should I buy a pen rod? The answer is always yes. So I've included this one. It's a bit more expensive, but if you're someone who's going to fish a lot, it's, it's a really good option for a rod and reel combo for a good price. Uh, seven to 10 foot, go, again, go the eight to 10 foot. Medium to heavy again, fast action again, two piece graphite EVA. I think this one will go quite well for you. Uh, 6,000 means a good size reel, 5.1 bearings, 5 6.1 aluminium, carbon fiber drag washes, many of give you nice and strong, uh, braid ready reel stock, tailored rubber gasket on the stock, full metal body and side plates on the reel. So again, Pen is a great um, brand. I've never had a problem with Pen and the reel is a good one, good size and all the things you want, it will work in a lot stronger areas than the others as well. So you'll be able to chase some bigger species with that one. Okay, 
that is it guys, that is my three surf fishing rod and reel combos, hope that was helpful for you. If you're watching this within the post, please like and subscribe to my channel below, that way I can keep you up to date with everything that's happening in the world of fishing. If you're watching this within the post and you have any comments, any questions, any experience with any of the options that I've listed there, any experience with surf fishing or surf fishing rods and reels, if there's anything that I've said that you have a different opinion on, would love to hear your comments there. And that is it. Thanks for that, and I'll chat to you soon. Have a good time fishing. Bye.